The number of votes, 733. A majority of members that make up the parliament, 374. Votes in favour, 383. Voti contrari trecento ventisette. Three hundred and twenty seven. Abstentions, 22, one blank vote. And on the basis of these votes, the candidate for the President of the Commission was proposed by the Council and has been elected by the European Parliament. And I would like to congratulate Ms. Ursula von der Leyen for her election. And I wish her all the very best for her mandate. And in line with Article 124, Para 3 of the Rules of Procedure, I will inform the Council and I will invite them for the Commission President to propose the various Commissioner positions. And there will be a letter informing them of the Parliament's decision. So you're watching that uh, as it uh, happens. It looks like it's official. Ursula von der Leyen is to be the new uh, European Give Commission President. to the President who is here. There she is, uh, Germany's uh, current defence minister. She actually leaves the job uh, tomorrow. She, she now is confirmed in her new job as uh, president of the European uh, Commission. Uh, those numbers again, 733 votes cast. I congratulate you on behalf of the Parliament on your election as president of the European Commission. On behalf of the other members, uh, and the rest of this assembly. You have a very important job. It's very important for the European institutions. We need to prepare for the hearings of the commissioners, the designate commissioners, and you know that we will be uh, very scrupulous in the work that we do here in the Parliament. And you mentioned topics today here in plenary, and we look forward to getting into those in more detail and speaking to the members of the college with those. And then the competent committees will be dealing this. The next few years are going to be very important years, important for the future of the European Union, and we will be successful if there is close cooperation between the European institutions. I will give you the floor so that you can speak to the Assembly. You have the floor, Madam. Mr. President, um, and an honourable, honourable mem members of this Parliament, I feel so honoured and I'm overwhelmed, and I thank you for the trust you placed in me. You, the trust you placed in me is confidence you placed in Europe. Your confidence in a united and a strong Europe from east to west, from south to north. Your confidence in a Europe that is ready to fight for the future rather than fighting against each other. Your confidence in a Europe that will take the big challenges of our times together. The task ahead of us humbles me. It's a big responsibility, and my work starts now. 
I thank President Sassoli. I thank all the group leaders. I thank all the members of parliament who decided to vote for me today. But my message to all of you is let us work together constructively because the endeavor is a united, a strong Europe. Thank you very much. Grazie. Thank you, von der Leyen. Adesso trasmetterò le hand over letters to the Council and, of course, to President Donald, Donald Tusk and inform him of the decision that we have taken. So the session is suspended for a few moments. Well, that it is. It's official. Ursula von der Leyen, Germany's present defence minister, uh, has a new job. She is to be the uh, president of the European Commission. Um, let me just bring you those figures again. 733 votes uh, cast. Uh, the majority uh, that she was striving for was 374. She actually got 383, uh, taking her nine over that limit. Uh, there were 327 votes against 22 abstentions and one blank paper. Uh, watching uh, those proceedings uh, with me here in the studio is DW's um, political correspondent, Simon Young. And in Strasbourg, where that uh, vote has just uh, taken place, uh, we have uh, Max Hoffman. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen will, uh, will take up her position as uh, EU uh, Council President in November. Let's see if we can uh, have a word with uh, Max Hoffman there uh, in Strasbourg as uh, Ursula von der Leyen uh, receives the thanks and congratulations. Um, do we have Max Hoffman? All right. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that question. I uh, uh, Max, you, there you are. I, no, I was question, wondering if, we, me, uh, if, if, if you were actually there. And you are. So, um, a nine I'm vote here. majority. <laughs> um, a nine vote majority. What, what, do you, what do you make of those figures? It's a, listen, it, there was a learning curve involved in those numbers. Last week, it was really all about uh, just getting that majority for Ursula von der Leyen that sometimes seemed a, seemed a little out of reach. So, you know, obviously being journalists, there was a, a, a bet going on who would be closest. And uh, you had a lot of journalists that bet for 380, 381, 382, 383. So very close to that absolute majority she needed of uh, 300. And 74. Now, the optimism in the last days on the side of Ursula von der Leyen increased because the Social Democrats started coming around. You even heard today some of the Greens saying they might vote in favor of her. And that's why many thought you know, she might get over 400 votes, just like her predecessor, Jean-Claude Juncker. The uh, majority now is, is much, much smaller than uh, most of us here would have expected in the late afternoon. And I think I, I know why this happened, because, because of the speech of Ursula von der Leyen that did win over basically the Social Democrats and maybe even some of the Greens and also the Liberals also alienated parts of the so-called ECR group, which is uh, the right-wing Eurosceptical group, where, you, for example, you have the Polish uh, Law and Justice Party in there that many would define as right-wing populists. So they didn't like that. They didn't come up with a consensus whether to vote for von der Leyen or not. So everybody was free to vote in favor of her or not. And it appears she lost a lot of votes on that side of the spectrum, I, I suppose, um, that she's probably not unhappy about that, given how she acted in the plenary this morning. She's probably happy that she managed to get a majority without those uh, parties on the right. Uh, DW uh, political correspondent Simon Young, your, your immediate say, reaction to this? I hear you now if I'm still uh, on air because I lost the... That's it. Your reaction to, the, to this result? Well, I think it is, uh, for Ursula von der Leyen, uh, worryingly close. It's single figures close. Uh, only nine votes uh, is her, her margin of victory. I think that does create a bit of a problem for her. First of all, it shows how essential these get-to-know-you sessions and these, these shifts in position that Ursula von der Leyen has been doing over the last week or so uh, to, you know, meet the European Parliament uh, politicians, many of whom have only just arrived there for the first time after the recent European election. 
you know, they got to, had to get to know each other, get to know their own positions, work out what goes where. Suddenly, they're pre being presented with a, a German politician that they hadn't reckoned with before, and she's really had to work very hard to, uh, you know, push, put out this message that she's a listening uh, person who's ready to... Uh, you know, take on things that are said to her. She's moved, as I said earlier, very far, really, as a conservative politician towards uh, not just the green agenda, which is perhaps easier for her uh, to do because that's a mainstream agenda, but certainly towards uh, a sort of left-wing agenda. She's talked about, OK, uh, you know, jobs for, for young people, uh, that's fine, but, you know, how do you implement that programme? How, how much money are you willing to spend on it? Uh, she's a German... In the past, in recent years, Germans have not been so keen to, you know, open the coffers to get big social programmes like that going. Uh, she's also talked today, for instance, about a, a European-wide uh, fair minimum wage. Again, not something that she can actually deliver, but she's apparently going to, you know, uh, base as part of her programme on pushing the governments, the member states, to introduce something like that. Now, of course, there isn't a European country where that hasn't already been discussed. The six countries that don't have a minimum wage uh, are, you know, are places where you know, there hasn't been a majority for it in their parliaments. So, you know, when she said today, you know, we, we need more Europe, we need more coordination, more harmonisation, more qualified majority voting, and less veto from national governments on things like tax and social policy. You know, this is the, the pro-European agenda that has primarily not been driven forward by, uh, you know, the European People's Party particularly. It's, at the moment anyway, uh, being driven forward by, by socialists and Greens uh, and others. And uh, don't forget, all of this, of course, in the context of the rise of uh, nationalist... Uh, parties who, uh, you know, in some way uh, threaten to roll back Europe, if not indeed to, to bring down the whole European edifice. Interestingly, strangely reminiscent of the, the political situation here in Germany. Max Hoffman in, in Strasbourg. So Ursula von der Leyen now has the job. I think she doesn't start until November. What does she do next? She's going to give a press conference later, but I think tonight she might celebrate with a little sparkling water because that's her way to celebrate. Uh, none, I have somebody standing next to me who knows that because he's a close confidant. We can say that, right? David McAllister, he's uh, obviously from the European People's Party, so the same party as Ursula von der Leyen, also the head of the Foreign Affairs Committee and a guest on DW frequently. I saw you hugging Ursula von der Leyen earlier after a victory. How do you feel? This was a very moving moment, not only for Ursula von der Leyen, but for many, including myself. I know Ursula von der Leyen now for nearly 20 years. We started our political career together in the regional parliament of Niedersachsen. And uh, she's just a convincing European, and she's a convinced European. We all knew it would be close. We all knew it would be a hurdle to take, which wouldn't be easy. And now we can look forward there's a lot of work now in front of us, but today, coming from the same region as was La Fonderland in Niedersachsen, we are very, very happy. So tell me what uh, the people in the EU Commission have to expect now. She's obviously very disciplined if uh, sparkling water is her way of celebrating. Ursula von der Leyen is a very hard-working woman. She's very efficient, she's extremely knowledgeable, very bright, and she has this ability to grasp new political issues in depth in a very short time. A huge advantage is that she speaks three European languages fluently, not only German but also English and French, and she has experience on the international stage, not only at the European level, she also as a defense secretary, she got to know NATO, she knows a lot about transatlantic relations. What does she do, have to do now first? Well, she has to set up a new commission. She needs to talk to heads of government. Uh, she has announced that the next European Commission should be gender-balanced. And we will then have the hearings in the European Parliament in September and October. And if things go well, we can start work on the 1st of November with a new commission. She won with a very small margin, smaller than many today expected, only nine votes ahead of the absolute majority of 370 votes she needed. What does this mean going forward for her work with the European Parliament? Well, 
regarding the circumstances of the last two weeks, I am personally glad that she actually was elected. Just imagine she wouldn't have been elected. We would be in a very dire situation. So a majority is a majority. Of course, this is a close majority. But now she has trust and confidence of a majority of MEPs. And now we have to talk about content. We have been talking about people.